Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Stocks Around Us with me, Pizza. Guys, as you're walking or driving along the street, you see these birds perched up on these huge power lines. Have you ever wondered, how come they never get electrocuted? I mean, they're just sitting there chilling, not a care in the world. How are they doing that? So, there's an explanation. Let's brush up on some science. You see, currents will choose to flow through anything that has the least resistance. Since birds have a much higher resistance than the power line, of course the currents will choose to flow through the power line instead of the birds. It's like walking on flat ground or versus walking across a rocky mountain. Of course, you would choose the flat ground because it's the easier path. Another reason why birds don't get electrocuted is because of the fact that in order for any current to flow, the circuit has to be complete. Since all currents must eventually flow to the ground, they will pass through the wire to get to the ground to complete their circuit route. So if a bird has two feet on the wire, the only thing it touches is the wire, not the ground. The circuit is incomplete. The bird is safe. But of course, that's in the case if you touch live wires, which why would you? Power cables are actually very safe because they're properly insulated. And it's thanks to these cables really that we have electricity to use day and night. Today, we're going to learn about power transmission with one of the leading cable manufacturers in Southeast Asia, Sarawak Cable, ladies and gentlemen. Sarawak Cable Berhad is the largest cable manufacturer in Malaysia. They are also involved in the transmission line business and other power-related projects. The company's business can be categorized into two main divisions, which are manufacturing and project and engineering. Starting with their manufacturing arm, Sawarak Cable operates with eight cable plants throughout Malaysia. They manufacture cables and wires for many different industries, such as for power generation, transmission and distribution, oil and gas, marine and shipboard, telecommunication, automotive, as well as commercial and housing developments. Their cable products span from the ones used to distribute electricity from main power generators all the way to the general housing wires, which we use daily in our homes. The company also owns one of the most integrated steel fabrication and hot dip galvanizing plants in Malaysia. What they do is make steel structures, including towers and poles, galvanize products, which is dipping and coating to protect products from corrosion guardrails, tower testing facilities, and more. In addition to manufacturing, Sarawak Cable also does construction and insulation, which involves constructing transmission lines, civil works for substation and power plant projects, and general infrastructure and construction works. Some of their projects include Pengarang 275K Voltage Overhead Transmission Lines Project, and package B and C of the 500K Voltage Sarawak Backbone Transmissions Lines project. As part of their services, the group also provides aerial power lines and aviation services. For example, surveillance, inspection and maintenance via helicopters, emergency medical services, and others. Furthermore, Sarawak Cable has also ventured into the renewable energy sector with its first mini hydropower plant in Indonesia. It will be under a build-operate transfer system with a concession period of over 20 years. With their comprehensive activities and services in the power sector, Sarawak Cable has become the most integrated one-stop power solutions provider in the region. So guys, right now we are here at one of the company's manufacturing plants where they're producing all kinds of different cables. For example, I have here with me an underground cable. This is what it looks like, quite heavy. And this is an overhead cable. And these are all the cables for the power networks in different countries. For example, this one is the cables used in New Zealand and Australia. 
This one is in Malaysia. And this heavy one is Singapore's power grid line, which we're going to learn more about today and about the company with our special guest, Mr. Tan Kok Hong, the COO of manufacturing of the company. So Mr. Tan, how is the power infrastructure industry doing in Malaysia and within the ASEAN at the moment? Okay, uh, let's start with ASEAN. Uh, according to the uh, International Energy Agency's 2015 report, there are approximately 150 million people in ASEAN that still lack of access to electricity. And the demand is expected to be tripled from now until the year 2040. Mm. That's the ASEAN front. Whereas in Malaysia, the demand for electricity supply is expected to grow at around 4% annually. That is in line with the uh, Malaysia economic growth. So um, in this uh, company like the uh, Sarawak Energy Braha, the uh, utility company in Sarawak has also set a very aggressive target to establish a 7,000 megawatt of uh, generation capacity, mainly in hydro, uh, by the year 2020. Mm. So all this uh, will actually, uh, together with the uh, uh, ASEAN cross-border power interconnection, will really spur the uh, demand for the uh, power infrastructure. Right, so you're, an you're anticipating a lot more demand. Uh, yes, yeah. So right now, how much business do you have domestically and overseas? Okay, um, in Sarawak Cable, yes. our business is divided into two divisions. Mm -hmm. One is the manufacturing and the mm -hmm. other one is the uh, project. For project works, uh, currently 100% of our works are in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Whereas for manufacturing, like the, for cable and wire itself, we export about 15% of our product to about 15 countries in the world, uh, mainly in places like Oceania, Australia, New Zealand, uh, ASEAN, as, and as well as uh, Middle East. I see. And um, what is the margin for the engineering and project side compared to the cable manufacturing? Um, Which has better margins, would you say? It, it depends on the products and the uh, project cards. But uh, for example, like last year, uh, Manufacturing contributed about 55% of the group's uh, revenue and profitability, mm -hmm. whereas project contributed about 45%. If you look at this group of main clients, we classify as the public sectors or the utility sectors. Mm -hmm. They contribute about 40% of our uh, revenue as far as uh, manufacturing is concerned. But if you look at the uh, project division, uh, no doubt our customer is actually the contractors, but eventually the owner will still be this uh, utility. So right. you would say like probably 100% for the uh, project side are contributed by this uh, main group of customers. I see. And over the past few years, how much have your sales grown? Um, if you look at it before the year 2015, Sarawak Cable Cable sale is only about roughly 100 million ringgit. But last year, 2015, uh, we registered about nearly 800 million revenue. Uh, almost ninefold. Mm. Uh, that is mainly because uh, we acquired two new subsidiaries, right. the cable and universal cable. Uh, for this year, 2016, we expect a double digit growth as well because uh, we managed to integrate these two into our group and, and we, we see a healthy growth. We, we capitalize into each other's strength. Uh, but going forward, uh, we do expect a more moderate growth for probably single digit. So looking into your project and engineering division, can you elaborate more on the different activities that you do within this division? Okay, for project engineering division, what we are doing, we are doing the uh, transmission line installation projects, mm -hmm. whereby we will um, erect the tower mm -hmm. and install the conductors, terminate it and, and, and commission it. Mm. Uh, the other segment of it will be the uh, erection of substation or the so-called the uh, a small power station. Uh -huh. Yeah, I see. And you know, as you mentioned, a lot of your clients are utility companies, yeah. telecom, yes. and other clients. How do you compete for contracts with these clients? Uh, for project divisions, uh, we we the, the contract we actually go on uh, open bidding. Uh, open bidding. Open bidding. I yes. see. And right now, what are the key projects you have in your pipeline? Currently, we are doing a, a major ones for the 275 uh, kV overhead transmission line in uh, Pengurang, which is south of Johor, for Petronas. Mm. That also includes a 275 kV substation, which is a small power station. There. Mm. Yeah. Uh, whereas in Sarawak, we are doing the tail end of our 500 kV Sarawak backbone project. 
How do you ensure that the company has a steady stream of revenue and you know ongoing activities? Uh, for project itself, uh, we, we, we are bidding a lot of projects and then uh, currently we are still in a negoci final negotiation to, to close a 500 kV transmission line in Peninsula Malaysia. So, so we have a sizable order book. Uh, at the same time, we are bidding for a lot of projects. So, so as, as we go on, as, as we develop, uh, this project that we are bidding will materialize into order in hand. Right. What are your expansion plans for your core businesses of cable and projects? For cables, um, we are looking at more on organic growth for this couple of years because uh, we have just uh, acquired uh, Leader Cable, Universal Cable. So uh, M&A, maybe not for the next one, two years, uh, but uh, we are actively looking into expanding our uh, marketing uh, efforts in country like Indonesia. Since we already have a, a hydro plant there, we right. get to know the, the clients there. Uh, and places like uh, Thailand, where the growth is uh, still very rather uh, robust and rigid. Um, for internal side, uh, we always focus on R&D. Uh, we actually have a target to develop minimum two new products or two improved products per year. Now, uh, so like this year, we have the uh, trapezoidal conductors. So uh, with that, uh, we, we hope to enlarge our product range Know, uh, internal growth, but uh, as I said, M&A um, for the next couple of years maybe not uh, in our radar, uh, but we won't rule out the possibilities down the line. Of course. Now, what would you say is your key competitive advantage? Our competitive advantage lies in our uh, quality products, our very extensive product range, and our well-established brand name. As a group, as a Sarawak Cable Group, we can offer the customer uh, uh, integrated power solutions right from the uh, supply of uh, materials, cable, accessories, to the uh, installation and commissioning, uh, as well as uh, transmission line, uh, installation and uh, substation construction. So that, that, that is the like, uh, total integrated uh, solution. Yeah. Uh, we are also one of the very few contractors in Malaysia who are qualified to undertake a 500 kV transmission line project. Not to mention that we are the one and only company, a cable company in Malaysia that is capable of making 275 kV uh, underground power cable. You know? uh, all this will actually give us a very uh, strong advantage compared to our competitors. Right. Well, thank you so much for today, Mr. Tan. Thank you. It's thank a pleasure you. meeting yeah. you. Financial Highlights At the end of 2015, Sarawak Cable's revenue was over 1.45 billion ringgits, or around 12.2 billion baht, growing by over 1,000% from 2010. Its net profit was at 39 million ringgits, or 327 million baht, growing by over 600% in five years. Its net profit margin was at 2.6%, and ROE around 12.6%. Its PE was at 13.9 and PBV at 1.6. At the end of 2015, Sarawak Cable's share price was at 1.72 ringgits or 14.4 baht, a growth of 42%. Its market cap was over 545 million ringgits or 4.5 billion baht, a growth of over 200% in five years. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Sarawak Cable. Join us again next time for more company highlights with me, Pizza. So if you'll excuse me, I have some cable testing to do. See you guys later. Bye.